NEO Day, the annual event from the Chinese battery electric vehicle startup. If you're not familiar with NEO, check out my video overview. They revealed their latest model, the ET9. You can call it an executive sedan, but it's really a, a CEO sedan, longer and taller than the other sedans in NEO's lineup. But it's way more than just a new body. The NEO ET9 is built around some of their all new and some industry first technologies, encompassing their latest and greatest into one product. It will compete with vehicles like the, the BMW i7, but I also want to compare it to another all new vehicle that competes in a completely different segment. NEO Tesla. William Lee is the current CEO and co-founder of NEO. They host an annual NEO Day event that attracts crowds larger than Tesla's. Both stocks are favorites of retail investors. Both are frequently predicted to go to the moon. Tesla recently revealed details of their latest product. And once you get past the styling and the stainless steel body, you'll find some truly important technical developments that make this truck remarkable. Neo revealed their latest product, and while the styling is far less controversial, the technology underneath is perhaps more impressive and in many, many cases similar. So let's go over the car itself, then go deep into the underlying technologies. Neo's lineup is broken into three body types. ES models are an SUV shape with a somewhat upright rear glass. EC models are a cross coupe version of the SUV and ET are their sedans with an aerodynamic fastback. The newly revealed ET9 is a smart, all-electric executive flagship. Really designed for the 0.01% of buyers, it's not the kind of car that will sell in huge numbers. In China, it's very common for executives to be driven by a personal driver. That's why you see so much technology going into the rear seats of vehicles. In the U.S., Rear seat technology tends to focus more on appeasing bratty kids. The styling is described as Landjet, and it definitely has a presence to it. Another word might be baller. Cadillac Celestic is another competitor that comes to mind. The wheelbase is very long, and the wheels are large. It's a four-seater, with rear seats being the most important. Personal video displays, a mini fridge, skylights for when you want it to be bright, sunshades all around for when you don't. If you follow NEO as a stock, I would not expect a car like this to move the needle. It's not a volume vehicle. But underneath the beautiful surface is their next gen technology that we can only assume will make its way down market into their other vehicles. That's why it reminds me of Cybertruck. That Tesla has important technologies that will eventually make it to the rest of their lineup. And the NEO ET9 is going to do the same for their lineup. NEO's power swap, where the battery gets replaced instead of recharged, they continue to grow that network throughout China and now Europe too. They claim to have brought that swap time down to only three minutes. That's actually faster than filling a tank with gas, if true. NEO users have completed. 34 million battery swaps, which that, that number is kind of mind-boggling. One every 1.2 seconds. They claim that customers are buying the standard range battery in their new vehicle. Then they're upgrading to the longer range battery as needed for the occasional road trip. And when their larger 150 kilowatt semi-solid state battery fully rolls out, it will give owners yet another choice to upgrade to. Their latest power swap 4.0 stations change batteries faster and can perform up to 480 swaps a day. The battery takes out of the car is then recharged to make them ready for the next customer. They have a buffer of 23 batteries in that station. The roof now has solar panels to help with recharging, but those panels by themselves are not sufficient to do all the charging. LiDAR sensors on top of the roof monitor the parking area and helps to manage the automated flow of vehicles into and out of the station. They also talked a lot about charging equipment. NEO continues to build out their own network of charging stations in China. Their latest Power Charger 4.0 hardware can deliver up to 640 kilowatts. Compare that to Tesla's V4 hardware, which has yet to roll out in North America, but is showing up in Europe. 
Now, I'm going to be a little skeptical. The picture they showed is just of the dispenser. There must be a separate power cabinet that's not shown. Also, the cable is rated at 765 amps, liquid-cooled, but weighing less than 6 pounds. The cable in the image looks very thin for being liquid-cooled. I'll wait to see how well this whole system works when it's deployed. To take advantage of this charging hardware, the ET9 boosts up to a 900-volt architecture and claims peak charging of 600 kilowatts. Unlike Cybertruck, the vehicle appears to retain the traditional 12-volt architecture. Tesla's new 48-volt architecture isn't something that customers will notice or will drive them crazy, but it does reduce the weight and eventually the cost of the vehicle architecture will get less too. So let's hope more OEMs jump on board that. That 900 volt architecture gets boosted to 925 volts for some applications, including the motors. Like Cybertruck, it features a mix of motor technologies, front and rear. In the rear, it features a new W-pin motor with internal permanent magnets. W-pin refers to the design for how the copper wire is wound on the stator of the motor. It results in a more efficient and shorter design, very energy dense. It produces 340 kilowatts, or about 455 horsepower. I'll just say it, Cybertruck doesn't have a single motor that can touch that power output, although... When Jay Leno drove the Tesla Semi, the engineer said the motors are capable of producing more power, but they are detuned to achieve efficiency and probably longevity. Neo made improvements to their oil cooling system for the rear drive motor, leading me to speculate that with great power comes great amount of heat. The biggest downside of a W-pin design is that they are more complex to manufacture. Unless Neo developed a better way of making that W-pin design, this may only be used on their highest priced vehicles, not across the lineup. Up front is a 180 kilowatt or 240 horsepower induction motor. They claim that it has the highest power density. Combined power of the two motors should make this land jet fly. The battery of the ET9 is a Neo design 40... Uh, really? Uh, Cybertruck uses the Tesla design 4680 cell ET9 uses the Neo Design 46105 cell. The numbers refer to the diameter and height in millimeters of the cylindrical design. Tesla's 4680 cell is off to a rough start. Production ramp up has been slow, and evaluations of the batteries have been underwhelming to, to downright disappointing. Neo claims an energy density better than Tesla's 4680 and very fast C rate for charging enabling that 640 kilowatt peak charging. Let's see how well they do in independent testing. Total capacity for the ET9 pack is 120 kilowatt hours. That is a new pack design for NEO, above the 75 and 100 kilowatt hour options that already exist. To be clear, this is not the semi-solid state battery being developed by NEO's partner, WeLion. That battery goes into a large 150 kilowatt hour pack, and it's very slowly coming to production. Cybertruck and the ET9 both have steer by wire with no mechanical connection from the driver to the steering system. They both feature four wheel steering for better maneuverability. Neo goes beyond air suspension and offers Skyride, their intelligent suspension system. And this is not just a marketing gimmick. It's a hydraulic active suspension system. They say in the presentation that it's an industry first. Porsche Panamera has a system that is not integrated, according to Neo. I'm not sure how it differs from BYD's DSUS intelligent body control. All of these systems are able to demonstrate some ride qualities that, that look like an illusion. The Neo system uses electric actuators in place of shock absorbers. They are from an American company called Clear Motion, which bought the design rights from Bose Corp. Basically, the same math that goes into canceling sound waves can be applied to canceling lumps in the road. This is very cool new space that has been worked on for years, but it's finally starting to hit the showroom. And my main hesitation about this is that it requires energy to make that system works, and in a battery electric vehicle, that will affect range. Headlights are 
also intelligent using micro LEDs that can radically adjust the beam pattern on the road. Other vehicles outside of the U.S. can do this too, although I really like the concept of projecting a crosswalk light pattern on the road to let pedestrians know that it's safe to proceed. I thought that was pretty innovative. Finally, let's see what new development NEO has in the area of active safety and autonomy. The ET9 will have their latest Aquila 2.0 system. Other NEO vehicles feature that top-mounted LiDAR sensor in the middle. That's what's under the bubble. Radar sensors are located left and right. The ET9s add additional LiDAR sensors on each side that have a wide field of view. This provides 350 degrees of advanced perception around the vehicle. The radar sensor is now a 4D imagery system for the first time. Again, 4D radar is a real industry term. This is not marketing BS. It allows a system to sense the direction of travel of an object, not just its location. As we all know, Tesla only uses cameras for its self-driving system. The ET9 has high megapixel cameras, 4D radars, and three LiDAR sensors. All that data needs some powerful processing to make sense of it. NEO's Atom computer in the ET9 switches from NVIDIA processors to a chip of their own design. You hear that, Elon? NEO's now making their own AD chip, too. The four NVIDIA SOCs that are used today get replaced by one NEO AD chip. Now, each ET9 will have two chips. It has a hot standby design for redundancy and safety, allowing it to switch over in milliseconds if needed. <sighs> you know who needs a backup? Me. That was an exhausting amount of information. The last numbers is the pre-order price, 800,000 won. That's about $113,000 US. That sounds cheap for all that tech. Deliveries, however, are a year away, Q1 of 2025. As for NEO stock, I would rather they have announced more affordable models that would sell in higher volumes or announced further expansion into Europe or, heck, into North America. Their cars, they are clearly leaders in EV technology. Financially, they need to continue through this current pricing pressure and high cost of borrowing. If they can, it's easy to see that they're good enough, they're smart enough, and doggone it, people like Lee. Share your thoughts. Thanks for watching.